Alright guys, welcome back to my channel. You guys want to learn C-sharp videos, so I got one for you today. Today we're going to be coding an ATM. Now we all know what ATMs are. They're just simple machines that give us lots of money to spend at the casino, and then we can go back and just keep drawing money from it until we're broke. All joking aside, ATMs are obviously just machines that you can withdraw money, you can deposit money, and you can like show your balance and, and among other things. So I thought it'd be a fun learning experience if we went ahead and coded one today, so let's just hop right into it. We're going to open up good old Visual Studio, and we're going to create a C-sharp console app, and... We're going to call it ATM. All right, guys, we have our blank template here. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to say using system because that's just going to import some default things that we need. And the next thing is we're going to define a class called public class card holder. And right here, we're going to draw on our object oriented programming skills. And we're going to define what a card holder actually is. I just realized I spelled it wrong. It's not a holder, it's a holder. So now that we have our class card holder, let's think about what defines someone who has a bank account. Okay, they have a first name, a last name, they have a debit card that uh, belongs to them, they have a pin for that debit card, and they have um, some sort of balance in their account, right? So I think those are some simple terms we can use to define a card holder, and we should just create some variables. So first we're gonna say string card num, because we need a card number. We're going to have a pin, so int pin, we're going to have a string, first name, string last name, and then finally a double to hold the account balance. So we're just going to double balance. So initialize those. Now we should initialize our constructor. An easy way to do that is obviously just to say public card holder. And we're just going to pass all these in as parameters to this function. Honestly, it's actually suggesting that I generate a constructor. And let's go ahead and click that. It already knew what we wanted to do. We just wanted to take all these variables we created, pass them into the constructor, and instantiate them as new objects. So here we go. We have a perfect constructor here. And now let's set up our getters for all these properties. So let's have one called public string git num. And this is just going to be in charge of returning the card num. It already knows what I want to do. That's absolutely insane. Um, just a side note, I'm using Visual Studio 2022, which has the most updated, you know, IntelliSense and things like that. So if you're not seeing what I'm seeing, um, go ahead and pause the video and copy the code. I'm sorry, but you should probably upgrade it. Next thing we're going to have is public int um, git pin. And you guys can kind of see the pattern we're going with here. We just need to, you know, define these getter methods for each property that we have. So the next one obviously is going to be public string, get first name, and we're just going to return the first name, turn first name, public string, get last name, we're going to return last name. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and get balance or public double get balance. So honestly, uh, this is probably gonna be the most useful one out of all these. We we'll use all these it's probably at some point, but but it's good practice to create functions like this to use throughout our program. Now going along these get functions, we should also create setters. So it's good practice to do getters and setters for your classes. So I'm going to go ahead and create a few setters and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. I've created a series of set functions. So we have set num, which just creates a new um, set number. And we have set pin, which uh, sets the pin and so on. We have the first name, last name, and balance. So go ahead and pause this if you want to catch up, or you could skip this part as well if you don't want to. All right, guys, now that we have all those initial steps out of the way, let's create our main method to run the actual ATM. So we're going to say public static void main. And of course, we're going to pass in our string args and open that up. Now in here, we're going to define a few functions that will help us on later on in the ATM. Let's first create a function only in the main method because that's the only spot that it's going to actually be used. So we're gonna say void print options. And this is just going to give users a simple menu of options that they could choose from once they have successfully logged in. So the first thing we're gonna say is console.writeLine, which is going to print a brand new line to the console. Please choose from one of the following options with three dots. And then we're going to console.writeLine again. And then we're just going to list our options. So we're going to have a deposit option. And honestly, just take this and copy it a few times. So we're gonna need two, three, four, four total options that we have. And we're going to change the numbers, of course. So go ahead and change those. Second option is going to be withdraw. Third option is going to be show balance. And the fourth option is going to be to exit. All right, guys, that's all we need for that function. Let's move on to the next one. The next one's going to be in charge of handling deposits from the user. So we're gonna say void deposit, and we need to pass in the current user. So we're gonna say card holder object, and it's going to be named current user. 
That way we pass in the whole object that the uh, of the user who's currently logged in. First thing we're going to ask is how much they would like to deposit. So console.writeline, and we just need to say, how much money would you like to deposit with a space? So that way they can go ahead and enter in the next line. Then we're going to say double deposit because obviously they could do um, some sort of cent amount. I'm going to say is equal to double dot parse and then console dot reline. So console dot reline is in charge of reading input from the user, and that usually uh, returns a string. A important thing to note is we want a double because we're setting it to a double, so we need to parse it from a string and turn it into a double. Now, fair warning, this could obviously trigger in a full on error, and I'm not going to address that in this video, but you should probably wrap this in like a try catch loop if you're scared about that, but I don't think we need to go that in depth about every single error. Now, assuming that we have our deposit now, we're just going to say current user dot set balance, and that's going to be equal to deposit. And it's just insane that it always knows what I want to do, but that's exactly what we need. We need to call our set balance method, pass in our deposit that we just got, and that will set the new balance for the user. The next thing we need to do is just go ahead and thank our user. So console.writeline, we're going to say thank you for your money. Your new balance is, and then colon and a space. And then here we can just simply call on our property. So current user dot get balance. And that's why it's super nice to have stuff like getters and setters, because you can just simply call that and it will return the thing we're looking for. Now the next function that we need, and as you probably guessed it, we need something to manage withdrawals. So we're going to say withdraw. We're going to once again pass in our card holder of current user. Now this one is a little bit different than before. So we can copy this first line. We're going to ask them how much they want to take out. So how much money would you like to withdraw? And I'll say put a colon here and set a question mark up in the deposit because that just looks better. After that happens, we're going to do a similar thing. So we're going to copy this, put this here. So double withdraw all is equal to double dot parse and then go ahead and read the line. And obviously with withdrawals, we need to prevent them from withdrawing more money than they actually have. So we should check that. So we should check if the user has enough money to actually go ahead and do that. So we're going to say if the current user dot get balance is greater than withdrawal, and that's insane that it knows what I want to do. If this happens, we're just going to go ahead and warn them that they don't have enough money. So we're going to say console dot right line. And in here, we're going to say insufficient balance with a sad face because we're sad that they can't take out that much money and then we're going to have an else here and in the else this is the situation where they do have enough money so we just need to subtract the amount of money from their balance and then you know go ahead and like thank them for you know withdrawing money so we're going to say that the current user that set balance is equal to withdrawal but instead of that obviously we need to subtract that from the current balance so we need to calculate the new balance double new balance is equal to current user dot get balance minus the withdrawal. Honestly, we should be really clever about this. We could just take this part and just put it in here and that should work. So we don't even need this new line here. We're setting the balance equal to their current balance minus whatever they want to take out. And then we could go ahead and thank them. You're good to go. Thank you. All right, guys, and our next and final function that we need that's uh, useful to us is we're going to say void balance. And this is simply going to return the balance of the user. Once again, we're going to pass in the current user, but this is just going to be a one liner. So we're going to say console dot right line. And in here, we're going to say current balance with a colon and a space and then a plus. And then we're going to say current user dot get balance. We're going to go ahead and finish that off with a semicolon. Okay, guys, now we're actually ready to start setting up our game. And to do that, we should set up like a default library of users that we can call upon. So obviously that when we're testing it, we have something to call against and really test it out. My idea is to create a list of just fake people with fake numbers and pins, and then we can go ahead and run the game after that. The first thing to do is we're going to create a new list. So list and inside these little brackets here are these little less than uh, greater than symbols. We need to specify the type of object that this list is going to contain, which is this card holder. So this is a list of card holders and we're going to call it card holders, of course. And this is going to be equal to new list of card holder. Now, obviously we have a, a list, but we need to fill it up with fake people. So under here, we're going to instantly reference it. We're going to say card holder, card holders dot add. And then in here, we're going to construct them. So we're going to say new card holder object. And in here, we obviously have five different properties that we need to set. We need to set a card number, a first name, last name, a pin, and a balance. I'm going to go ahead and just copy what I have. And then you guys can pause and see what I did. All right, guys, I'm back. So I went ahead and went on to like Google. I'm like, okay, 
randomly generated Visa MasterCard numbers, and this is what I came up with. So these are just random credit card numbers. Obviously, they're not real. Um, I set random pins for each one. I gave them fake names, and I gave them, you know, fake balances, just random numbers that I could think of. And that way we have a nice little database sort of thing of users that we can actually call on and test if this works. All right, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and prompt the user. This is the very first start of our game. So we're going to say console.writeline, and we're going to say welcome to simple ATM. Because, you know, we want it to be simple and we want to welcome them nicely. And the first thing we need from them is go ahead and console that right line once again. And we're going to say, please insert your debit card, colon and space. Under here, we need to intake a debit card of some sort. So we're going to say string debit card num is equal to blank. We're just going to initialize that at nothing. And then we're going to say card holder current user is also just initialized, but not equal to anything yet. So now we're going to have a user validation loop that way that if they enter a wrong card number or if they enter, you know, like an int instead of a string, we don't crash the program. If it's just an incorrect number, we could just keep prompting until they actually provide a good one. So we're going to say while true. And in this validation loop, we need a try and a catch. So go ahead and make it try, go ahead and make a catch. And in this try portion, we need to first read the line. So we're going to say debit card num that we initialized earlier is equal to console.readline. Now that we have the card number, we need to check against our DB, which is up here. It's not a real DB, but you know what I mean. In the real world, this would have an actual database. And now assuming that we have a number, we're going to say current user that we initialized earlier is equal to, and then reference our list, so card holders. And then we're going to access a method called first or default. And what this does is it allows us to enumerate a list and search for certain properties and return the entire object. And what I mean by that is, Given a debit card, we can cycle through here and you know look at each one and we're like, oh, hey, there's a match here. And we'll just take this whole thing and return it and set it equal to current user. So in first or default, we want to say a equal sign and then the greater than sign a dot. And then we need to reference the property that we would like to look for, which is our card num property. And we want to see if that is equal to the debit card number. So assuming that this is true, that there's something in this list that is equal to the uh, thing that we were given, we're going to set this current user equal to that. And then now we can easily check. So we're going to say, hey, if the current user is not equal to null, so assuming that there is a match, we could just go ahead and break out of that loop right away. We can go ahead and warn them that the card is not recognized. So we're going to say console dot right line card not recognized. Please try again. And then go ahead and take this exact same line and put it in the catch area because obviously if they you know manage to throw an error you want to just say the same statement so that they know to try again all right guys now that we have a debit card number the next thing is we need to check that pin for the debit card number you know just like a real atm you insert your debit card it loads for a couple seconds and it's like okay hey prove it to you provide your pin so to do that we're going to say console dot right line please enter your pin with a colon and a space then we're going to say int user pin is equal to zero. We're just going to initialize that and nothing. And then once again, we're going to have another try catch in a user validation loop. So honestly, copy the same thing and just use it down here. I'm going to change a few things. So we're going to change debit card number to user pin. So we're going to intake a pin of some sort. And we're once again going to check against our database. But you'll notice it threw an error right away because we cannot set a string equal to an int. So we're going to say int dot parse and then wrap this whole thing in that. That way it returns an int, sets it equal to user pin. Now it's gonna be a little bit different. We already have a current user, so it's gonna be, we don't have to search anymore. So if we just remove this, and we're just gonna go right to the if statement. So we're gonna say if the current user dot get pin function returns something that is equal to our user pin that they gave us, we can just go ahead and break out a loop because we know that it's right. On the other side of things, if it's not right, we need to tell them that it's wrong. So we're going to say incorrect pin, please try again. And then just go ahead and take this line and replace this. And now that's all we need for our pin section. Now, assuming that they provided a valid debit card and a valid pin, now we can actually just go ahead and welcome them into the system and then start doing, um, giving them some options. So the first step of that was, is we're going to say console.writeline and we're going to welcome them in. And the way to do that is we're going to say welcome and then space and then plus and then we're going to put their first name proving that we know who they are. So we're going to reference current user dot get first name. So, you know, if their name is like Dawn, for example, we have Dawn in here. 
If they enter the valid card number, valid pin, we're going to go ahead and say, hey, welcome, Don. And because we're extra nice, we're going to add a smiley face. So go ahead and space and then a little smiley face here and end it with a semicolon. Now, the next thing we need to do is initialize this option string as zero or sorry, uh, option integer, because we're going to be choosing from this list of options. And here we're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to have a do until loop. This kind of operates a little bit different than a standard, you know, while loop. We're going to say do while this stuff is true. And the only thing we're going to say down here is option is not equal to four. The reason we're doing that is because four, if you remember, up here is equal to four is the exit key. So as long as they choose one of these or some random number, we're just going to keep looping. But if they choose four, they're exiting out of the system. Now, assuming they exited out of the system, we're just going to say console.write line. Thank you. Have a nice day with a smiley face. And we're just going to send them off like that. But inside this actual loop, we're going to first print the options to the user and give them a menu to choose from. Then we're going to go ahead and have a try loop or sorry, a try block with a catch stanza down here. And here is going to be option is equal to int.parse console.reline. And once again, it knew what I wanted. And we're going to say if the option is equal to one, we want to call the deposit function because that's our very first thing in the menu for, uh, that you saw earlier. And we're going to just pass in our current user to it. Else if the option is equal to two, we want to, instead of deposit, we want to withdraw. And we're going to pass in current user once again. Else if option is equal to three. We want to do a similar thing here, but instead of this, we're just going to say balance. So that way it'll just show the balance. If they enter four, we want to exit out of here. So we're going to say else if option is equal to four, we want to go ahead and break out of the loop. And then finally, if the, all of this other stuff fails, we're just going to set option back to zero because that's what it is before the loop. And that's just an easy way to set things back without tripping it up and you know, let's say they call deposit and the loop runs. We don't want it to rerun again and then it continuously calls deposit. We want it to set it back to zero. So that's all we need and let's go ahead and run it and see how it goes. All right guys, our program is running and let's go ahead and grab one of these fake debit cards and just put it off to the side for now. All right guys, I went ahead and grabbed a fake debit card and I'm going to go ahead and paste it in here. I pasted in this value and you'll notice that it says, please enter your pin and the pin for this is one, two, three, four. And you'll notice now it, it welcomes us in successfully. It's like, welcome John, please choose from one of the following options. Um, I'd like to first check my balance. So go ahead and click three. Our current balance is 150 bucks. So let's go ahead and put some more money in here. So one, how much money would you like to deposit? I want to do 20 bucks. So now your new balance is 20. And now we have a problem. Let's go ahead and fix that. So instead of setting the balance to deposit, we want to set the balance to similar to down here where the withdrawal was. We need to get the current balance and then plus the deposit. So do this, switch this out with deposit and go ahead and plus. And now we're ready to run it again. Now let's test a few of our um, catches here to make sure that the program doesn't crash. So when it's asking for a string of a debit card, let me just enter some numbers and make sure we don't break it. You'll notice it just says card not recognized and um, it just wants us to try again. So now we're going to put in the real card number. So here we go. And now it's like, okay, please enter your pin. I should be able to enter some gibberish and it does not crash. It just wants me to try again. But if we do one, two, three, four, it lets us in successfully. So now let's try our deposit function again. We're gonna do one. How much money would you like to deposit? I want to put in 50 bucks. So now it's like thanking me for my money. Our new balance is 200.31. So now let me go ahead and withdraw the same amount of money. We're gonna do two. How much money would you like to draw, withdraw? I want to take out 50. Now you'll notice we have an insufficient balance and that is another error that we should fix. And now I just realized something, this section needs to be flipped around because obviously if they want to withdraw more money than they have, then we should tell them that. Sorry, I had that flip flop. Let's try this again. Okay, now it's time to withdraw some money. I have uh, 150 bucks in there and let's go ahead and withdraw. I want to withdraw 20 bucks and it's like, hey, you're good to go, thank you. Let's show my new balance. You'll notice it successfully worked. It subtracted 20 bucks from there. And now let's go ahead and click exit and make sure that works. Okay, we're good to go. It thanks us and tells us to have a nice day. So there it is, guys. That's the completed ATM program. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you like this video and go ahead and give it a thumbs up and that will really help me out. Comment down below if you have any thoughts or suggestions for the next video. And thank you guys for watching once again. And I will see you in the next one.